if you solve every possible flop for button versus big blind and aggregate button's C batting frequency, you end up with a graph that looks something like this. Plenty of small bets half pot and below, and quite a bit of over betting as well. But strangely, the solver really doesn't like betting 60 to 80% pot. If you're someone who regularly defaults to C betting two thirds, you might be feeling a little worried right now. So let's take a look at why this trend exists and hopefully build a better understanding of what drives CBET size. The first thing to note is that there are in fact boards where two thirds or three quarters is the best size. On low disconnected boards, for example, three quarters pot is the most common size by far. Our betting range revolves around over pairs and strong top pairs, and three quarters is just the right size for these hands. Bet any bigger, and we isolate ourselves against too many strong hands. Bet any smaller, and we lose out on value against hands that we beat. If we wanted to bet hands like weak second pair or under pairs, then it would make sense to use a smaller size like one third. But unfortunately, we cannot do this without overly weakening our checking range. I'll explain this in more detail later, but for now, the point is quite simple. Every hand has a sweet spot when it comes to bet sizing, and the hands that want to bet on low disconnected boards have a sweet spot of around 3 quarters pot. As for why these 3 quarter bets don't show up in the main graph, that has more to do with the relative proportion of different boards. Low boards are less common by nature because there are less combinations of them. So even though 3 quarters does get used on many low boards, it doesn't have a significant impact on the overall graph. The real question, then, is why the solver doesn't like betting 3 quarters on the rest of the boards. If we use GTO Wizard to filter for jack high boards and above, we see a very familiar trend. Lots of overbets and small bets, but not much in between. Here it is in graphical form. You can see the graph for high boards closely mirrors the overall one. Not surprising given that they make up 67% of all possible boards. So what's the problem with betting 3 quarters on the flop like a screen deuce? Or king 7-4? These flops are obviously quite different, so let's deal with them one at a time. On king 7-4, 3 quarters pot is too large of a size. We saw earlier that every hand has a sweet spot when it comes to bet sizing. A hand like ace-king is perfectly fine with betting big, but with a more marginal holding like 7x, we absolutely have to size down if we want to bet our hand. We could of course check all our marginal hands and bet big with the range of top pair or better. But this isn't ideal because it allows big blinds over cards to realize too much equity. So the solver builds a small bet range around hands like 7x and 4x, and mixes in a bunch of stronger hands so that they don't get raised too often. But wait a minute, you might say. Doesn't this cost us value with hands like ace-king? After all, we are betting much less than the optimal size for our hand. Well, not necessarily. The fact that our small bet range contains so many marginal hands actually makes big blind raise quite thin for value. Hands like king-queen and king-jack that would normally just call now start raising to put pressure on our marginal hands. As a result, ace-king generates quite a bit of value by betting small, enough to make it indifferent between both options. Interestingly, it doesn't actually matter if the board is rainbow or two-tone. The solver still likes betting small with a range that includes lots of marginal hands. If you're a more intuitive or old-school player, this might seem a little strange. Why are we letting villains flush draws see the turn for such a cheap price? Well, let's imagine that we go for a bigger size like 2 thirds spot in order to charge the flush draws. This runs into the same problem as before, which is that our marginal hands are not strong enough to bet such a big size. As a result, we are forced to check them and allow the big blinds over cards to realize equity for free. 
To circumvent this problem, we could try having two different bed sizes, big with our strong hands and small with our marginal hands. But this leads to a different problem of its own, which is that our small bed range is too vulnerable to getting check raised. To make matters worse, our strong hands themselves don't actually gain that much EV from sizing up. This is because flush draws have way too much equity for us to value bet against comfortably. Imagine making a pot size bet with a hand like Ace King. 60% of the time, the flush draw misses, and we win 100 chips. But the remaining 40% of the time, the flush gets there, and we actually lose our bet. So with a bet of 100 chips, we only generate 20 chips of EV against the flash draw. It's not an exact calculation, but it does illustrate an important point, that big bets are more effective against hands that have less equity against us, such as weaker top pair, and that betting big to charge the flash draws is a flawed concept. So that explains why we size down on boards like King74 regardless of whether the board is two-tone or rainbow. But what about a board like Ace Queen Deuce? Here, our strategy is more similar to that on low boards in the sense that we are not interested in betting marginal hands. With middle pair, for example, betting doesn't really accomplish much because the hands that fold have very few outs against us. We are perfectly happy to check and let them see a free turn and might even get a bit of extra value if they happen to hit a pair. So just like on 974, we check most of these marginal hands and build a betting range around top pair or better. The only difference is that on Ace Queen Deuce, 3 quarters is too small of a size for top pair. This is because Big Blind is lacking most of the two pairs and sets and would also have 3 bet with Ace King preflop. So with a hand like top pair good kicker, we can bet very large without isolating ourselves against too many better hands. Once again, our strategy looks quite similar whether the board is rainbow or two-tone. We still want to go for the overbet because our marginal hands are still not interested in betting. It's easy to get confused here because a hand like middle pair feels more vulnerable when the board is two-tone and it's tempting to bet more aggressively to try and protect our hand. But here's the key point. Betting for protection only works if we can get our opponent to fold. And since flash draws are never folding against a flop bet, they don't actually make us any more inclined to bet our marginal hands. Ultimately, we get a graph that looks like this. Lots of small bets on boards where protection is important, Lots of overbets on boards where protection is not important, and not that much in between. There is still one question that we haven't answered, however. Why don't we bet marginal hands when the board is low? On a board like 974, for example, protection seems pretty important. With a hand like middle pair, it's tempting to make a small bet in order to fold out overcards like queen jack and queen 10. But if you look at the solver strategy, 7x and 4x without backdoors are almost pure checks. This looks especially strange when you compare it with a board like King 7 4. There, we didn't have a problem with betting our marginal hands for protection. So why do we start checking them on 974? The most common answer is that protection isn't as important as it looks on low boards. If we want to bet hands like middle pair, we have to use a small size. And against a 1 3rd C bet, Queen Jack and Queen 10 with the backdoor actually have a pretty easy continue. The key difference, presumably, is that these overcards cannot call as comfortably on King 7 4 because of how little equity they have against top pair, which results in 7x denying more equity when the board is high. I'm not particularly convinced by this explanation, largely because many of these overcards are floating on King 7 4. Queen High with the backdoor is a pure call, and so are hands like Jack 10 with a heart. In fact, 
if we look at the response for both boards, the amount of overcards we fold out with a small bet looks quite similar. So I don't think we can really say that middle pair is checking on low boards because it doesn't need protection. Instead, I think 7x is checking simply because we need some one pair hands in our checking range. Imagine if we bet all of our one pair for protection. What does our checking range look like? It's going to be capped at ace high, and this allows big blind to run us over on the turn. Even a hand like bottom pair can go for a big bet and get plenty of value from our ace king and ace queen. The only way to prevent this is for button to check some one pair on the flop. And if you think about it, 7x and 4x are really the best candidates for this. We don't really want to check a hand as strong as an over pair, and it wouldn't make much sense to check top pair in place of middle pair given that they are both equally vulnerable. Compare this to a board like King 7 4, where we have other one pair hands that can take the place of 7x and 4x. Hands like Pocket Queens and Weak King X are perfect for protecting our checking range because they are not that vulnerable to getting outdrawn. So we check them in place of our 7x and 4x, and this frees up the latter hands to get the protection that they need.